All right, what we'll be looking at here is a pretty complex autopsy that uh, we did a couple of months ago, actually. And so this will be a little bit longer video, but I think it'll be worth your while. So this gentleman, uh, 60s, uh, presented and had a heart attack. Uh, you know, garden variety heart attack, no big deal. And um, then he had some complications and some other things happened, which I'll get to, and he passed away. And the family wanted to know what was going on, so they ordered an autopsy, and this is what we found. Uh, so his initial heart attack happened about seven days before uh, he passed away. And this is a section of his heart muscle. And what we saw grossly uh, was kind of an area that looked uh, yellow to tan, a little bit more tan than anything, with the little red flecks in it. And so you can see lots of normal heart muscle here. Well, somewhat normal. And there's these areas that appear lighter. And when we go down and we take a closer look at these areas, you will see that this is actually uh, granulation tissue. And so, you know, as we learned back in wound healing, granulation tissue is what happens after uh, cells have been injured and when the tissue is attempting to form a scar or regenerate and remember cardiac muscle can't regenerate so basically what happens is a scar forms so this is granulation tissue and just based on the fact that it's here this tells us that this is consistent with the infarction that he had uh, about seven days before he passed away because what we have is uh, granulation tissue and then surrounding reactive muscle and so this is what you know cardiac muscle looks like when it's becoming reactive the, the cells get really pink they get large nuclei. These are the boxcar nuclei. Certainly he had some myocardial hypertrophy because he had high blood pressure. So this was the first thing that happened. Well, he was at home and then started having chest pain again and knew the drill. He chewed his aspirin, came into the hospital, and so he went to cardiac catheterization. And at the time of cardiac catheterization, it was found that he had a couple of things. Uh, now, you wouldn't get to see this otherwise because they don't take coronary arteries out normally in patients, but they noticed that when they were catheterizing his right coronary artery that there was a dissection. You can actually see that here. And so what you can see is that we have blood uh, going in between the layers of this muscular artery. So this is blood dissecting through the muscular artery. Now this dissection is not severe and probably would not have killed him um, had they controlled blood pressure and other things. There were other things going on that wasn't uh, going to allow this gentleman to live. Uh, but this is just one of the findings that we did confirm at autopsy that yes indeed there was some dissection going on. And so it's not an uncommon finding and you can see that there's actually quite a bit of blood uh, kind of working its way into that artery. Uh, what they did find was a lot of narrowing of his arteries and so this is his left anterior descending artery and what you can see here is kind of what we were talking about in the atherosclerosis lecture. Here's a muscular wall on the right, here's a muscular wall on the left, and then here is that goo that's in the center of the atheromatous core and you'll see that this is kind of amorphous and pink uh, and then you have these uh, purple dots. That's actually calcification. Uh, interestingly enough in this plaque you can see what's left of cholesterol. So one thing that happens when we process these is that the cholesterol washes away leaving these little angular cracks. These are what we call cholesterol clefts. So this is uh, support that yes this was an atheromatous plaque that did have cholesterol in it. It had been here for a while because it started to undergo calcification as you guys know. And if you look over here, this is what's left of the lumen of his left anterior descending artery. So there's not much space here for blood to get through. This is what we would call greater than 90% occlusion, although in real life it probably been, would have been more like 80% because the higher pressures still hold it open a little bit more than after someone passes away. There is no blood pressure so everything collapses down. But that is a great example of a very thick atheromatous plaque with cholesterol formation that you can see at low power. When we took a look at his heart we had noticed a couple of things. First off, one of his valves had actually come loose and there was a reason for this. So as you guys will learn, one of the things that can happen in myocardial 
infarction is that the heart and its wall and its muscle weakens and it can lead to rupture because that's a high pressure system so what you're seeing here at low power is organizing infarction and this happened likely at the time of the first infarction seven days before and you'll notice I'm saying first because yes he did have another one and at the edges you see what's left of a few neutrophils kind of percolating through so this might be a little bit younger uh, but these are all dead myocytes and so looking at this you would say that you know this is a few days old and what we have here are the papillary muscles that are attached to this and so if we go down and we take a look you'll see that there is an area of infarction and it's extending right up into the papillary muscles and this led to papillary muscle rupture with uh, slackening of the chordae tendine and then valvular incompetence which is as you can imagine something that you definitely don't need in a myocardial infarction furthermore there was a very large area of acute infarction and so this infarction uh, is kind of evolving at the time we're looking at it and I'll find you a nice area so this is the what we would call the endocardium and, and so this is the inner lining of the heart and you can see that there's a lot of these blue dots and those are all inflammatory cells that have collected because this infarct is occurring and if we go down and we take a look what you see is a pretty extensive uh, infiltrate of neutrophils uh, fibrin uh, here you can see coagulative necrosis so basically these are all muscle cells that don't have nuclei here you can see the ghost of a nuclei there and so this area what's going on here is uh, around one to three days now our dating is not always precise on these down to the exact hour uh, but we can tell that this happened about one to three days before he passed away which kind of fits with this clinical history as he was having chest pain and complications so one of the things that will happen in heart attack patients is that they often go undergo multiple heart attacks uh, if they have a complicated disease course and so this guy did have a complicated disease course with his dissection and valvular incompetence and uh, so this led to multiple infarctions that you can see here so these were the findings in a very complex cardiac autopsy of a gentleman that had multiple myocardial infarctions uh, dating between one day and about seven to eight days um, with papillary muscle rupture and right coronary artery dissection with really thick atheromatous plaque formation in his left anterior descending artery.